Okay. Um, good afternoon, everybody, um, and thank you very much for joining us uh, on this uh, session with the arts having a critical role for COVID. Um, some a, a topic that is extremely relevant to all of us today and how to navigate going forward. Uh, we are waiting for our moderator, Denise, to join in. There's some technical glitches. But in the meantime, uh, I will give the floor to each of the speakers who are here. I am honored to share this platform with them. Um, over to you, Sunny, and then um, we go on and so forth. If Thank everyone can you, just Sarah. introduce them. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, everyone, to, uh, for joining us. And um, uh, today I'm incredibly honored. And uh, my name is Sunny. And um, I studied in New York for uh, many years since at NYU. And uh, also, I am um, um, in the curatorial work. Um, I studied art history. And also, I moved down to like Southeast for our business. For the masters, and all in all, I um, spent in New York for, for about fifteen years, and then I went back to China to set up my uh, own company called um, Arts Route International. So I have been curating and organizing a lot of um, uh, art um, museum shows and independent art projects around the world, and mainly in China. So um, for me, my focus right now is more on the curatorial work. And um, I am seeing curatorial um, installations and, as an entire piece of art. So I do my work um, and, as an artist and to work with the artists to manifest this entire art show um, in our form. So that's what I do. Thank you. Thank you so much, Sunny. Um, over to our next speaker, Biarut. Uh, okay, thank you. Uh, hi, I'm Biarut Biarpung uh, I'm artist from Thailand. Um, I work with um, various media, including moving image, photograph, video, and installation. Um, and uh, my work usually um, transmit issue from my uh, experience and surroundings yeah thank you thank so you. much Pierre. Uh, we can't wait to hear your thoughts on what's what you think of all the different navigations we have on this panel and uh moti um may i hand it over to you please to introduce yourself uh, good afternoon to you, uh, Moti Abramovitz. I'm here under, under the head of Bruno Art Group. Uh, I'm a mechanical engineer by profession, but at the same time, I'm a third generation art dealer. Uh, we are based out of Israel, but uh, very much uh, involved in Asia in the past uh, 10 years or more. Uh, we have art galleries in uh, Israel and in Singapore, and we run offices and shows in the India and Korea and other places in the region. Uh, mainly bring to Asia Western art from um, first of most from Israel, but also from Europe and the USA. And we do some project vice versa, introducing uh, Asian artists uh, in, uh, in, uh, in, uh, in Israel. And uh, thank you very much for giving me the opportunity uh, to participate in this panel. Thank you so much, Bobby. Um, so, so far we have a curator, an artist, a gallerist, and I suppose I come in in the role of uh, somebody who's a patron of the arts and uh, that of a collector. Uh, I am the chairperson of, um, well, I'm Tarana Soni. Uh, and I am the chairperson of the National Task Force for Art and Culture from India. Uh, I represent the Confederation of Indian Industry. And my role uh, really actually makes me bridge um, the connections between the public sector and the private sector for the promotion of arts and culture. I am also a trustee on two foundations, the Chennai Photo Biennale and the Foundation of Indian Contemporary Art. Both with different mediums where uh, we promote emerging artists and promote art from South Asia internationally and nationally. I am on the International Council and the South Asian Acquisitions Committee of the Tate 
Martin in the UK. And uh, it is wonderful to see how international institutions are now looking at acquiring works from our part of the region and they are active in all the regions that are represented today on this panel. So without further ado, uh, this particular panel um, speaks about countries continuing to tackle the COVID-19 pandemic and how we are all trying to emerge on the other side, imagining what a post-COVID-19 world looks like. What do we think that artists can bring to this discussion 18 months after the pandemic began? Um, also, how does a multidisciplinary approach to the arts enable us to build a more inclusive and socially aware um, future? So let me ask um, Piarit first. Uh, what do you think, Piarit, artists can bring to the discussion um, of imagining a world post-COVID-19? Uh, in my opinion, um, I think the the emergence of COVID has forewarned all of us about how we uh, should proceed. Uh, it requires a serious discussion of what we have neglected or left behind in a, a previous uh, rapidly changing world. Uh, the 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 COVID pandemic makes us realize that how important the public health system and basic welfare are and what happened to the environment when a uh, factory stopped emitting a carbon. Yes. Thank you. And taking from that, um, what do you think, Sunny, um, of the same query? Like how do yes. you imagine? What do you think as a curator that the artists can bring in this discussion? And what is it that you look at when you think of art in the post-COVID world? Yes, thank you. Um, so I think, you know, um, COVID-19, it's, um, it's kind of like a stop sign for our human beings. And I, I'm, I'm always thinking like saying, okay, well, the COVID stops people traveling, stops people um, really going, like the whole society goes really fast. And then maybe just let us stop for one second and ponder about exactly what is the essence for our lives and what is the essence for what, why we're living in this world. So my um, tutorial work, it's, it's more really concerning the timeless factors um, in terms of like how do we discover um, the internal truth of the universe or, or that higher con consciousness. So my work, I do not really get into the political situations or specific situations like that. But I think, you know, COVID really gives us a, a chance. And I'm always looking at the, the positive side. Of course, it, it has a lot of uh, difficulties for our lives. And um, but uh, maybe this is something for our artistic world and for the entire society to look at our artistic world um, in a different way and, and without our um, really, you know, forward thinking about post-COVID um, world and then thinking, okay, what we what is really important to our society? You know, what is that, um, uh, you know, screaming that, um, an essence for for us and, and in terms of the, the society. So that's why I think it's not necessarily a bad thing and it's just really uh, people how they take on this um, this point of view and, um, and and I think that a lot of people they go to the extreme like say the artist they say okay well uh, it's a COVID no shows um, or no exhibitions so we all go on digital and we all go to the NFT and then and all that I mean um, to me um, this is very short term of um, um, let's say how we handling the problems but I mean for the long term it, it might not really even work in that way yeah that's that's my personal point of view <laughs> Thank you, Sunny. You sort of began from like the overarching uh, way of how art kind of, um, you know, transcends uh, what is happening and then moved on to how the other artists are responding. And that's really interesting because um, to me, actually, contemporary art is always about telling the story of our times. And I uh, hopefully think that those stories will not all be uh, just 
negative, but the positives that will emerge out of the world pausing for a moment and seeing how that creativity comes out. Uh, but if I were to ask Mote, uh, as a gallerist, what you are seeing artists emerge out of this particular, uh, and how are they translating um, their work, Mote? What do you think? Well, I first would like to, to use a, a question that I ask on every lecture that I give about uh, the history of art. Uh, I hope to make a point. Uh, so my question, my first question in every lecture is when, when were, uh, when did we, uh, people start using art? When are, when are the first evidence uh, of people uh, uh, enjoying art, enjoying art? And of course, I get all kinds of uh, of response uh, everywhere. Some people go back hundreds of years, of years, but the the real answer is that we could go back to thousands of years to the caves, because the first evidence for the caves were people. Uh, although people lived in very simple caves, they still wanted to have art on the wall, so they they painted animals and 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 pregnant wo women on the walls. And that's, uh, in my view, the first evidence of of uh, of uh, using art. Uh, this pandemic showed the world that with all the technology and uh, how <coughs> and as, as smart we think we are, and the the all many of us feel that that's it. Uh, no, nothing can happen to to this world with all the technology and, and smartphones and everything and and firewalls. Uh, of course, a small virus got us back got us all back to, to basic. And in some, some ways, go, we went back to, to the age of caves almost, because if when there's a lockdown and you're closed at your home, okay, we have nicer home than those guys in the caves, but still everyone had to go back to his, uh, to his, to his cave, to his home. Uh, and then there's a much more feel for art, because when you're 24 seven in your place, you feel that you need the art. And I can uh, share with you that I'm just back. Uh, I mean, two, about a month ago, I, we participated with our gallery in the Korean International Art Fair in Kiev. And the uh, people were, uh, was, were, were starving for art. They were queuing for, for over an hour to get into the, into the fair. So there's definitely a need for art. Uh, and now is, in my point of view, the job of the artist to really uh, work hard and come up with uh, with new technique, new medias, new ideas, and fulfill this uh, demand from the public to to uh, to see to see art. And uh, of course, the NFT is uh, you know kind of, in my point of view, a hype, but it's 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 answering a need of the public uh, to be more exposed and uh, and and uh, and and get better uh, better uh, i would say mood but there's definitely the artist now in my point of view should should work harder than even even harder than before to to supply this demand for for uh, for relaxation i would say thank you um, you know, which sort of like just hearing everyone's responses makes me think about actually a more basic question. Um, you know, you mentioned that there were queues outside to see arts in real. Uh, obviously, there's a lot of uh, conversation about NFTs. Uh, we do speak about virtual platforms, whether we use them to view, we use them to buy or sell, or we use them to... Uh, you know, as a medium of art. But let me go back to a slightly more basic question, which I'd like each one of you to answer in just a few sentences, because it's so abstract and it's so broad. Seeing what has happened and the effect that you're, you are witnessing, what do you think is the effect that art has on society at large? And what do you think it brings to our everyday life? What is that one thing that, say, for example, each one of you missed? Uh, Piarit, if I can ask you first. Uh, uh, okay. Um, I, I believe that art has an impact on society to some extent um, because we all 
live in a, a world of information in various dialects. And whether um, anyone goes to art museum or not, um, we cannot deny that many artworks are presented not less than uh, any other factor in both mainstream or social media. And some artworks that pose question or raise uh, social awareness about specific issues, I think uh, this may have an impact on uh, people's thinking uh, at some point, yeah. Thank you. And Moti, what do you think since you started initiating this this particular question that came to my mind, what do you think? What do you think is the effect that art has on society at large, particularly given what we've witnessed? Well, I include into art not only visual arts, but also uh, music, uh, theater. Performing arts. Uh, performing art, yes, thank you. And uh, I don't know, you know, we, we, we've been, uh, we've been, you know, everyone was uh, blocked in its place. So I can tell, uh, tell you about Israel. Uh, for two, almost two years, uh, less than two years, 18 months, we had no performing art in, in Israel, no way, uh, of course, no concert, nothing. And it was a massive discussion about it, how much the people are in need for those events, how much how much people need to go to see a movie or to see a, a, a theater show, to go to a, the opera or to a concert or to a, the museum. So, you know, out of all the out of all the issues that we had here around, and you know, and the economy economy was stri struggling. If this uh, topic was uh, in the news, it means that there is a huge need for for, for arts, all kind of arts. Absolutely. There's no doubt, there's no doubt uh, about it. And uh, this pandemic maybe highlighted it more than all because you don't know that you need something till you really miss it or since, till, till you don't have it. And once, and uh, you know, you can maybe spend uh, two months not going to a museum, but once it's, uh, it's closed, then you feel how much you need it. And we had we got the proof that uh, people all over the world. I think I know that in Israel for sure, but I think all over the world were talking about it. So there was definitely a need. I completely agree with you. What do you think, Sunny? Yeah. Well, I think um, uh, arts. I mean, it's pretty much it's my life, and uh, I'm trying to really um, like bring art in such a value that people they would see the world in different ways. So this is the focus of my work. And um, um, for example, the, the Real Fiction Cinema I set up in, in China, um, wh which is a public art installation. It's public arts um, invention. It's a very big installation. Um, and people, they walk in, and then it's a, a cinema setting. But people, they're sitting, and then, but they, they actually looking outside. It's the, the window, it's a cutout. And people, they have this, the faces sometimes when I see those people, they, they were sitting inside, um, the faces that they have, it's, it's incredible. So that's something really, really touched me uh, deeply. And um, and also like people that they're talking about this project and they said, well, uh, because once, because it's, this is a temporary um, the public audience, Intervention. So once the the, the, um, the installation is removed, then people they were talking about social media in, on the social media and saying, "Well, this, they, it really changed my um, perspective about this specific area forever." So I think this is what art can do. Art is to change people's point of view about specific place, about their life, about their you know. This is the essence of uh, for me. This is a the essence of art, which really provides to people. And so it doesn't really matter if it's public art or it's a painting or something. And then something really touched people uh, personally. That's how important I think is intimate. That kind of distance between you and the painting and the artist. That's something very valuable to me. Um, and, and I think to the society, because people nowadays, they are very distant 
from each other and either it's on Facebook or on all the social media, but they are not really in terms of, um, let's say, this, this intimacy between each other or the intimacy between the work or or what not a piece of artwork with you and that's very personal and i think that's very very important for our society and for the, for the psyche for the for the health for everything as a human being so that's why i think very uh, very much so um and what our artists and and the curators we can bring out to the society is something very valuable Thank you. I completely agree, actually. And I think for me, um, being in isolation um, was was a feeling that uh, at least our generation hasn't uh, been familiar with. Uh, we had to look inwards and we moved to different platforms to view what we love virtually. But uh, the feeling of community is something that I really miss. I missed being amongst people, seeing their reactions to art. And I think that when, um, you know, particularly with public art, I, I think it has a potential to build communities. And that is what I miss. And it, it has the it has the power to to be um, one collective voice of of many, many people who have witnessed and experienced the same thing together. And the sense of going back to a museum, I mean, you can do what you want virtually and, you know, kind of console yourself with it. But the, but in person and, and to see something in physical and, and feel the, you know, just, just feel its life that surrounds you is something I missed very much. And I think it has the power to actually be our greatest soft power and um, also speak a language that kind of goes across nations, right? We are... We are four people on this platform and and we're all from you know different parts of the art world but also from different parts of the world and here we are united so i think it's a it's also a language which what you don't need different linguists for you understand it because it's a feeling and it's an emotion and i i think um you just can't do without that uh but that also brings me to thinking about it in the future uh, given what we have been through uh, what do you think um, uh, about the fact that a multidisciplinary approach to the art uh, do you how do you think it will enable us to build a more inclusive and a socially aware future um sunny you kind of touched on this so let me go to you first um just to use this other, yeah Sure. Um, so I think the multidisciplinary uh, it's very important because um, sometimes I, I think art is, is an experience. So the experience which can uh, really, you know, touch different um, subjects, let's say music, uh, multi mentioned that the theater or performance art, you know, in that way, and also uh, the sounds installation that's all i always use and um and to mix that together to bring that in, you know um power really to the people that's the experience so i think um it's because sometimes people they're not so aware of a uh, specific painting they can bring that kind of experience for them um, because paintings you still need to have certain art education or background or something to be able to feel that sometimes, not all of them, right? But if it's an experience, then people, they would collectively have that, um, you know, leading um, experience. Uh, the, the experience is led by the curator. And then um, for uh, the entire, let's say, sensory um, experience. So that's why I think the multidisciplinary, um, it's, it's very essential in terms of how we can direct the, 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 um, the entire environment for the, for the, um, for a specific exhibition. Thank you, Sunny. Yarit, what do you think? Uh, yeah, to me, uh, multidisciplinary approach, uh, is essential, uh, like during, uh, COVID epidemic, I remember that like uh, all countries um, try to mobilize experts 
from various fields to help each other to finding the way uh, to prevent and deal with the pandemic, right? So yeah, I think now we we require the, the holistic knowledge because everything uh, is interconnected. Uh, no single field of knowledge can save us all. And that, that uh, the same goes for art, uh, especially um, social engaged art, because I think artistic practice alone may not be uh, sufficient. For, uh, for example, if artists work on the environmental issues, um, we may need to do the research about the economic system uh, or the capitalist production process as well, because everything is interconnected. So uh, today's world, I think art um, should combine multiple disciplines or perhaps uh, collaborating you know, with, with um, the expert uh, or communities. Yeah. Thank you. Over to you, Moti. What do you think? Uh, I would like you, you were breaking up, Tara, Tarana, so I would like you to repeat the question to so make sure that I got it right. How does a multidisciplinary approach to the arts help enable us to build a more inclusive and socially aware future? Okay. Um, as I said before, there is a need for art, but I believe that our part of this equation, our, I mean, uh, all of us here, for example, curators, artists, galleries, is to enable as many people as possible to, to, to enjoy art. We need to make sure that the platforms are uh, accessible to as, uh, many, uh, as many people as possible, not just to the, I would say, in extreme lucky, uh, lucky people or rich people or people that can travel and, and go to art fairs and museums. So we, we must, and I'm not talking about only technology, but I'm talking about festivals uh, all over the world and, and, and go go down to earth. And, and, and this, this, this is, a, as I see, our, our part of the, our job after the pandemic, to, to make sure that art goes everywhere. And when we say multidisciplinary, I, I don't, I, I have, of course, I agree. I have no idea how it can be achieved, but definitely uh, I would expect an artist and a gallerist and a curator, that, uh, an artist that uh, doing art and the gallerist showing art and the curator to create a show to think how, what they can, what they, can, what they should do to make sure that the art reach the people, reach as many people, people as possible. So they need to go out from their out from their uh, scope of, for example, an artist just to create the art, but also how to deliver. And and and, and this is what I expect again from us, from all of us, and it starts from the artists. Uh, and this is these are the uh, the disciplines that I I think uh, need to be need to be used and uh, to to explore. Very deep thoughts, Moti, and, and one that I think all of us on this panel resonate with. Um, there is a lot to think about. There definitely is. And, um, you know, given that there are still limitations in many, many parts of the world to public art or to doing arts in person, uh, you're right, more inventive ways are going to have to be envisioned, which, um, you know, takes me uh, to thinking about technology and digital advancements. Um, and how they've played a role in obviously the outreach, the display sales of art now, uh, but it's also accelerated um, during the pandemic. Has this sort of affected your work personally, Piarit? Has it affected your work that people haven't managed to see it in person? Uh, yes, of course, because artist is uh, a fragile career. The arrival of um, COVID has a huge impact uh, to 
the lives of artists, including me. Uh, and however, the earlier this year, the NFT art and collectible boom, right? And um, I saw many of my friends, uh, ordinary artists and art students, enable to earn money during this crisis. Uh, to me, I survey the NFT world a little bit. Yeah. Uh, and I do agree that some of work that they sell uh, can make the art world like a check its, its head. Uh, but uh, I welcome this digital advancement. Uh, at some point, I think it is decentralized. Uh, it is not. Uh, it is not retained by the art art world gatekeeper. And but I agree that uh, NFT art uh, on the market today differ from the mainstream art uh, in the contemporary art world, but it's it just, just the starting, it's just beginning. So um, I'm still catch an eye onto it, like a, how you go. Yeah. Thank you, Piara. I think you mentioned the the word of the year, the NFT. I was I was I was trying to navigate around that and bring it in. You you mentioned it. So now we have to kind of take that forward. And I think I'm gonna ask Sunny to address. What do you think, Sunny? with all the news and you as a curator who has to look at different mediums of art and see what's out there. What, what, how are we feeling about NFTs? Are they here to stay? Are they here and going to take over all other mediums of art? Questions I'm asked all the time. What do you think? Yeah, I think uh, NFT is, um, there, it, there's a place for N NFT to, um, to exist because, um, of course, it, it avoided a lot of um, gatekeepers and also allowed um, artists to be able to be at the front line and then to be able to really uh, reap whatever their artwork can uh, profit from. So, you know, they can sell different editions. They can sell, you know, it's, it's, um, it, it's great for, to, uh, for some extent. But I, I don't think um, this type of, like, you know, if you say a, a, a collector would really keen on to own a piece of something they don't actually know what, it, what exactly it is. I mean, you're a collector, you know. Um, I'm not sure about that. And I'm thinking, like, you know, as long as we keep it in the um, healthy way, not really just go into like this digital um, encrypted um, world and then making art in, to go in that direction. And I really don't think that's the main direction our, our world is going. It's only for maybe some sectors and then there are some, you know, benefits from it, um, especially for for digital artists or for digital, you know, this kind of platform. But I really don't think this is going to be the leading way of how our, our world is going. And um, and and I, uh, to me, I think you know, if I, I mean, I collect some part, you know, art works as well. But I am not really venturing into this, and because I'm not venture capitalist or whatever, and um, and I really like the art as the art it is. And for its uh, sake, that's how I do my tutorial work, and that's how I collect sometimes. And it's um, it's really some piece of art really touch you deeply, personally. And then that's not really something on the digital uh, a picture or or something that can do that to me. So I personally don't think it's um, it's gonna be anything like the main way. <laughs> okay. Uh... I think many many things have been thrown in the air by your uh, by your feedback and comments, Sunny. Um, I mean, obviously, uh, you know, we all in the art world are seeing a certain kind of a person and a certain kind of genre that NFT is being put into. Uh, I personally don't think that it does not have the ability to touch you and 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 you know evoke a reaction that maybe more traditional forms of art do. Uh, I think it does. Um, and 
you're right. Uh, to me, it is honestly just another medium through which art was uh, created. And just like when you know performance art began, it didn't take away a canvas. And just as yeah. video art began, and it never took away an installation. And just as you know, sculpture sort of took kinetic sculpture, for example, took over the space of maybe something still. Like I feel like there's space for everything. Right? Like, and that's the whole point also of spreading this this web out um, and saying that it should uh, encatch every person in the community and have them relate to what they want. Um, like you, I think uh, as a collector, I uh, find it difficult to to collect something that's intangible in a sense. Uh, but, right. um, but, you know, um, we will let's go to the gallerist and ask him what role that you think that galleries have uh, to play in uh, NFTs, Moti. What do you think? Well, uh, there's a question from the audience. Uh, how do we see NFTs influencing the art trade in, develop, in developing e economies? So I see the NFT as another product, which I'm very happy for it, because now we have in our basket as galleries another product to sell. Uh, I think it is here for forever. It will stay, as I said, as another product. Um, it's speaking about spreading the art to as many people as possible, this is definitely doing the job. But at the end of the day, if I'm looking at uh, your uh, nice background, Tarana, of your, I guess, living room or office, uh, no NFT will, uh, no NFT can do the job of uh, those nice paintings that you have there and the, the the, end, the, great, the, great, uh, the great energy that they bring into it. Uh, developing economies. I hope it will. Uh, I hope that the NFT will help spreading the 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 the, the, the art in developing economies as a, for 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 beginners, for young people who are more attracted to technology. They, I hope they will start collecting art through NFT when they when they will reach reasonable prices. I'm sure that they are already. I'm not so much involved in it, but. I'm sure that the uh, young collectors in uh, developing economies will be able to start the collection with uh, reasonable priced NFTs, and uh, from there they will uh, grow to buy uh, nice painting and sculptures to to fill their homes. So it's definitely a complementary uh, market, uh, and uh, like you said, uh, any any new product is enlarging the market and not uh, not uh, biting parts of it. Thank you. Um, I mean, I suppose, uh, you know, all of us who have sort of had our little uh, dip in the pool of art are looking at NFTs as the newest thing, but you're taking it to another perspective where you're saying that start from the NFTs and move backwards and start appreciating this. So, you know, these are wonderful thoughts to think about. And um, I, I hope that um, the only thing that actually I get a little concerned about when NFTs is concerned is, uh, they are seeing they're not they seen much more as trading tools uh, rather than art at the moment. At least that is the perception that I get, and I hope that changes because the last thing that we want to think about or what we want from art. I mean, of course, anyone who financially invests is um, you know is interested to see that you know their 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 investment is not one of waste. But uh, let's hope the overarching uh, emotion always remains that we are the love of art and and that should remain above all other motives um well thank you everyone uh moti thank you for answering the question that we had in this panel uh i don't know if we have uh, no. i think we we're good we've answered our questions we are also a little over time uh, guys we managed this without a curator and it was so nice thank you uh, thank, thank you, you. Thank you. you saved us all uh, no, just just so so <laughs> <laughs> team effort right. thank you so much thank it was you. wonderful thank you. Good, to be, good to be with you bye bye bye, bye everyone yes, yes. thank you for listening bye. thank you thank you bye bye